back to the poor Chevy Cobalt. We got some parts starting with a brand new battery, ABS module, power steering unit, transmission controller, and a radio. So I'm going to install all these parts, connect them all together, make sure the network is good. We'll do the programming and get this thing out of the garage. Transmission controller mo module is plugged in. The ABS module, I just plugged it in. I didn't replace it yet. I just want to make sure everything is going to be okay. New battery is installed in the trunk. There it is. And then inside here, we got the new radio plugged in and the power steering I was hoping we could just replace the module but it doesn't look like that's going to happen because it has torque sensors that are soldered in to the module so you have to replace this entire unit and I didn't quote the customer you know a two hour steering column tear down so we're just going to leave the old one in place for now let's fire up the scanner and do a full health report. Make sure that all the modules are online. Let's see if we can unlock the radio and basically stop there and say, hey, to replace this power steering unit, we need more labor time. But at least it'll be drivable and shouldn't have any parasitic draws. So auto ID the vehicle, that's already a good sign for network integrity. It does not have vehicle stability enhancement. Let's do a smart scan, see what comes up. Okay, so transmission controller is online, brake controller is online, um, radio is online. So let's just see what codes are stored at the moment. And See if we actually need to do any programming. Okay, crankshaft position system variation not learned. That's to be expected. It's all kind of lost communication codes, radio, device, power, power. Let's just delete all the codes because you know the battery was obviously disconnected. And then rescan it, see if there's any like VIN mismatch codes, and then we'll try to unlock the radio using this special function. All right, let's see what codes we have left. So in the EBCM it says lost communication with transmission control system, so we will have to program the TCM and EBCM to match this VIN, this car, so they know what to look for. BCM, lost communication with transmission control system, lost communication with steering control module, and lost communication with airbags. So, again, the transmission controller it looks like it needs to be programmed. Let's look at the radio. Special function. Well, let's see if we can read the uh, module information here. Okay, great. We have the GM part number. Calibration ID, date of build, prom ID. So we couldn't read those on the old radio. So we should be in good shape. Radio setup. Possibly wrong vehicle request out of range. Okay, that's interesting. Learned VIN, theft armed, 
So we do need to reprogram the radio as well by VIN. Okay. And read fault code. No fault codes in the radio. All right. Let's hook up a battery maintainer. Program the EBCM, the TCM, and the radio. Um, that will be it for programming. Now this power steering control unit, that's plug and play, but it requires more labor to install. So uh, I think we're, we're in good shape. So we're in SPS2, GM Tech Line Connect, replace and reprogram. And well, let's start with the transmission controller. Okay, transmission control module. Next. Next. So right now it's unrecognized calibration and the selected is whatever, you know, for this VIN. So start programming that. I like to do a print screen just, just in case. Oh, I guess I hit the uh, go button. And this is a lot faster than programming the radio. So we'll wait for that to finish up, then do the EBCM. Uh, okay. So ignition shut off and turned on on its own. So let's proceed with the same VIN. So you can always check if the transmission module got programmed. No, it did not. I'll try to print screen this. Start programming. Let's see if it goes through. It's kind of concerning that the programming shut off in the middle of the procedure and it said unrecognized calibration. So I'll keep the camera on here. Boom, you see that? And look, right now it's gonna go boom, boom, boom. So it definitely did not finish. Ah. That sucks. That's why the EBCM was setting no com with TCM. That's a bad transmission controller. Dang it. <laughs> well, let's try the radio. Or let's try the EBCM just in case. Vehicle options. J M4 and MN5 and NW7. Let me check that. 
Okay, yes, we have JM4, NW7, and MN5. Let's see what the current calibration is. Next, current, selected, unrecognized, selected. Well, let's see if that goes through. Okay, so that seems to have finished. Vehicle processing update. Okay, so that seemed to be successful. Proceed with the same VIN. I mean, we can check if the ECM and the BCM are um, programmed correctly. I guess BCM is not even in the list. Uh, let's try radio. With the UQ4 speakers. I guess did it unlock itself? Interesting. Okay, well that's that's promising. <laughs> So, correction admitted, no audio condition. Well, let's let's try. It didn't ask me which uh, part number it was. All right. So the radio completed. Let's uh, clear DTCs. Security lights on, so we'll cycle the key, see if the radio works. Now, I don't know if you had XM radio, because we disabled power to the VCIM and the um, digital radio receiver, um, but at least you should have regular radio, the USB, the um, whatever, CD player. Alright, so key off. on no security light that's good okay so, so that works Let's see menu
We'll set his clock. So, at least the radio is back in action. All right, so whenever installing a component, you want to make sure all the functions work. So, first thing I noticed was the um, balance, right and left is okay, but fader, front speakers don't work. I'll have to ask the customer, maybe his front speakers are blown out. We'll see if the CD works. Now, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> we got a disc in the in the radio as a bonus. See CD loading. <laughs> okay, fun eBay music. Okay, let's try a USB. File not connected, file system not supported. Okay, I guess you can't read MP3s, but should be able to, whatever, whatever it's designed for. So, I'm just gonna tell the customer, front speakers don't work. Was that the case before? I assume it was, because otherwise the radio works beautifully. Well, for some reason, after the key cycle, the transmission controller now has the current correct system, you know, operating system, diagnostic, whatever, you know, all the calibration numbers. So let's plug in the ThinkTool Pros, do a, another health report, see if uh, everything's back online and we might be in good shape. Hey, everything's looking pretty good. Everything's green. We're just missing communication with, you know, the airbags, which are obviously disabled. Driver Information Center, switch to... And this battery current sensor performs, that's because I have the battery charger plugged in. Um, still need to do our crankshaft variation learn, which we can't do with a broken radiator. Can't run the car, can't warm it up. But, let's see, in the TCM, make sure we can read all of our module information. Boom, VIN is correct, everything's correct. That's that's good news. I'm just gonna call the owner, ask him, hey, did you have XM radio? Did you have front speakers? And we're gonna need two hours to install this guy. Then the car should be at least drivable. You need to replace the radiator, do a crankshaft variation, learn. <sighs> this is a long project. I just want to make sure that the transmission actually goes in the first gear. Oh yeah, I can do a burnout. All right, we're in good shape here. So I just spoke to the owner and he is like, man, this car is going way over budget. I mean, it is what it is. But he said he will make his son install the uh, power steering control module, the whole steering column, uh, because he's like, he's the one who was welding and caught the wires on fire. So, and then he needs a new radiator, fill that up with coolant, do a crank relearn. So we're, for this whole project, diagnostics, replacing all the modules, programming, we're at 1700 bucks with a new battery. So it was basically all or nothing, either scrap the car or restore it. Um, so at least we'll save it for the scrapper from the crusher for now. The owner is uh, going to take it from here. If I have any updates, I'll let you guys know. So thanks a lot for watching. Be careful with the welders, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, a little bonus footage. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to save the customer the hassle of tearing his steering column apart by replacing this module. And the hard part is you have to solder four pins on that go to a torque sensor. So this is the old module that I ripped off the steering column. And then put the donor module on there, soldered the four wires, bolted it back up. And good news is we can talk to the power steering and it has no trouble codes. Obviously, 
I'll make sure it works. We're back in business there. So the only codes remaining in the car is um, lost communication with the airbags. And the customer said he can live without the airbags. And then he'll have to do the crankshaft variation learn after he replaces the radiator. So I feel good about that. Car is mostly back on track. And customer will be very happy. Test drive it on the lane here. No coolant. Power steering works. No weird messages. Nice. Just needs a radiator, some tires, back to beater status. All little bonus footage on the Chevy Cobalt. The owner said, hey, he wants to drive it home, so go ahead, replace the radiator, fill it up with coolant, do the crankshaft variation, learn, get this thing back on the road. So I'm like, the grand total is like over two grand, but Leave in the comments, would you invest in your beater if, uh, if this happened to you? But it sure beats walking, right? Is that what Eric O says? So, we've got a new radiator in here. Book time is almost three hours in this thing. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's not a Maserati, but it was a little finicky. Here's what happened to the original. It got severely deformed when loading onto a trailer yeah it's uh, that's junk so filled it up with some deck school let's fire it up warm it up do the crank relearn with the scanner take it for a test drive make sure it's good to go it has a two hour drive to get back to home base all right, crankshaft variation learned. Engine's warmed up, at least mostly. Okay. Okay. Set parking brake. Yeah, apply brake pedal. Cycle ignition from off. Put it on. Apply and hold brake pedal. Start and idle the engine. AC off. Okay. It's going to warm up a little more. Now it says accelerator wide open throttle. Learn this ignition, sweet. No more check engine light. Let's take this baby for a spin. We'll monitor the uh, coolant temp just in case. Engine speed. Long term, short term trim. Mass airflow and map. Fuel trims are on the money. All right, let's see if it's drivable. First, second, third, there's fourth, beautiful, yeah these aren't bad little cars, 
more interesting than a Civic or a Corolla and definitely higher quality and than like a Cruze or Two liters, good engine. Make sure these brakes rub in, they're all rusty from sitting. Good deal.